Hi everyone, I'm going to tie for you today a simple little pattern uh, that came out a few years back when the uh, Zapperfly Quick Dub material was introduced and it comes in a host of colors. I can just show you a few here. And what I like about this material, it has a relatively thin core and the fibers coming off the material are very soft, very fine, so it gives a lot of flowing action to the fly pattern itself. And even though this is more so considered a leech, uh, the profile itself would lend itself to damselflies, to minnow patterns if tied in a narrow, thin profile. So it's just a matter of how you construct and build up the material, how much material you use, or a combination of materials you use. So in this pattern, I call this sort of dubbing on a rope, but what I'll do is I'll just start with some black marabou. So I've just cut myself small one inch stems and then I can just fold that material over the stem, create a small bundle, remove the stem, and then just strip fibers at the cut end. So this will be my tie-in point. And this, would re this really secures the marabou stems into the fly because we're actually tying right around the stem itself and the barbules versus bunching in a uh, a bunch of uh, fluff in there. Or... So what I like to do is take, you know, you can run a single color or dual color or triple colors. Uh, I mix and blend them uh, myself for different effects. So this is sort of the Halloween. I'll take about an 8 to 10 inch piece of orange, 8 to 10 inch piece of black, roughly the same length. We just measure the two off together. that there and it's easily torn and then I'll just tie them in together at the front of the hook just double anything back over top itself for a tag and then come back down to the bend of the hook here I create a dubbing loop which will fall short a couple inches of the overall length of the dubbing I've selected And then once I've created the dubbing loop, I just progress back forward. So I have this dubbing loop, and I have these two pieces of material. I'll keep them together. And what you can do is either by hand, just with a hook, reach in and through, grab the two dubbing materials, and pull them down to the end of the loop, and start your spin. Or, if you like a faster process, I have made myself a little hook off a coffee frother. And a friend of mine from Holland had showed me years ago. And I can just keep that material tight and spin it. So what happens here now With the nano silk, I also increase the strength in the rope. As you can tell, it's pretty. It's a pretty fine measure. The rope is pretty thin, still, and I can brush out and then just spin this up, the hook shank. Now you can lay down some head cement if you like. This makes a very, very strong pattern. And just spin that up in behind the hook eye or in behind the bead. I'll take two full turns behind the bead, making sure that it's getting tight, just to fill that area behind the bead. And then we'll go around 
the dubbing material in this fashion here once behind once in front we'll do that three times and then two three knot whip finishes and the fly pattern is complete short of brushing it out some more so like I mentioned I call this the quick dub from Zemperfly dubbing on a rope and like I said it's a very fine core material very fine hair so it gives it a lot of flow and then by brushing it out you can create a very nice small leech profile you can add in like on the dubbing loop you can add in a little bit of tinsel flash uh, that's what I had done earlier on this particular pattern don't want to put in a lot but I'll on the back end of the dubbing rope I'll just add a few strands in there so when I wrap it's all <clears throat> it's only applied uh, on the rope when it comes near the front of the head so I hope you enjoy that uh, so this is for anyone that has any dexterity issues for, with dubbing this is just a quick easy way of doing this I also run this on nymph patterns um, either in a singular strand or in a dual strand but I also build three stranded versions as well so here's one that's a little different it's two different colors of olive with an orange um, a little different hook style so that's just a good color combination of the olive and orange for the mid-summer season for trout fishing on our local lakes so I hope you got something out of that simple easy to tie uh, I got to fish with these last year for a year um, so I don't have a lot of experience with them but they certainly do work well and they have caught me quite a few fish throughout the summer months and into the fall. So I hope you got something out of that. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.